Welcome, I'm Devil Sniper, and today I'm bringing you episode number eight of our career mode with Nottingham Forest. And the first thing we're going to have to do is change the squad up, utilize our depth that we have. We have good depth, solid depth within the reserves, which is fantastic. Mix it up a little bit because the boys are looking a little bit tired, and I don't want to overuse them. I don't want to risk injury in any way, shape, or form as we go into our first game, a difficult game, in my opinion, at home to Doncaster. And the problem is, people will be sitting there thinking, do you know what? We should be beating Doncaster. And we should, don't get me wrong. We should be absolutely trouncing Doncaster, picking up the three points, getting on the bus, going to it, switch, and, you know, generally being happy. But football doesn't work that way. Teams like Doncaster can throw in the odd curveball, give you the odd funny result. You know, to be fair, they're in this division. They've earned the right to be in this division. They're a solid side. So we're not going to take the game lightly. And my biggest fear with some of the players is complacency. You know, they break into the side. They're a little bit complacent against the, the opponents we're playing against. Against, And that's the worst thing we can actually have. So hopefully, fingers crossed, touch wood, that won't happen. And as you can see, we've won a free kick in a decent position for once. Normally, we get free kicks out on the left wing or the right wing. And we have to try and float them into the box for the big centre-backs. But we can't seem to do that at this moment in time. And with the one decent free kick position we've had, we've actually wasted that free kick. Which is really really disappointing but Doncaster really did take the game to us fantastic run nice ball to the back post but that header the way he was angled to go for that header he's trying to go for a top corner I think he just misplaced where he was but Doncaster didn't sit back they wanted to come on at us you know it made it for a very exciting and open game which is something I really like beautiful skills down on that right hand side fantastic cross but great defensive header there the ball comes out to Eric Lahai just on the edge of the box he tries to bend one into that top corner the outside of his boot doesn't get a decent connection and to be honest with you if he pulled that off I think he was a magician such would have been the shot but a beautiful ball played through to Mackie Mackie breaking into that box using his absolute unbelievable strength that he has and he fires it across the keeper into that far corner he's such a strong player you know he just pushes away the defender breaks into a gap and bang what a cracking finish. Much more suited to playing down the middle than out on the right-hand side, out on the left-hand side. It's something that hopefully he can do. But the problem he's got, he's got to remove Lafondra. And Lafondra is such a big player when it comes to playing through the middle. And as you see, we did have a fantastic chance just shy of half-time. But it wasn't meant to be. And the save from the Doncaster keeper was second to none. The follow-up, the tackle for the follow-up was just absolutely amazing. Talk about... Timing at tackle world. That was absolutely sensational. But we did go in at half time leading 1 0, which was very important. These are the games that I mentioned. We have to win. You know, we can't get complacent. We can't look at teams like Doncaster and think, that's a give me. That is three points on the table. We just got to turn up. It doesn't happen that way. A beautiful ball into Lafondra. Lafondra sort of stops, goes for the fake shot, and just completely fluffs his lines. Why? Who knows? A striker in that sort of form should be banging them away, but we leave ourselves a little bit vulnerable at the back, diving in slightly, misreading. I mean, watch the way the centre-back pulls out. If it wasn't for the fact that our fullback actually had the intention just to step up at the last second, we could have been looking at a 1-1 scoreline, but we got away with it, which is most important. But Mackie, breaking through that centre of the park, plays a delightful ball over the top into Patterson. Patterson just about gets away from the striker, from the defender, sorry, pulls the trigger, and he just puts it wide of that post, something he has got to work on in his vision. Apart from that, he is absolutely sublime. I like his crossing. I like the, his work rates. I like his technical side of the game. I like the, the way he passes. And going forward, he has got pace to burn. He feels so much quicker than what is actually perceived he is. He's just a fantastic player. Regardless of that, we did come away with the three points. And again, we've got to change this, the side up because the fixtures are coming so thick and fast. The championship is just a non-stop roller coaster. And now we're in for a big game against Ipswich Town away at Portman Road. The problem is Ipswich are struggling this season. If we see the table, you'll see that they're down in the bottom section. You know, they had a great start to the season where they were winning games. You know, they were 6-1 and one at one point, but it seemed to go all wrong for them. A few injuries, I believe, and it's just completely and utterly collapsed for Ipswich. And uh, they're sort of struggling, but you wouldn't believe it in this game because it was Ipswich really did come out and gave us one hell of a game. Fantastic cross in there. All, we, we were being all ends up. That was some poor, poor defending. Poor marking at the back post. Gave him so much time and space. Darlow, to me, looked like he had it covered. But it was a fantastic miss in the end. And I say fantastic miss. Come on, I'm the manager of Forest. I ain't going to say that was a brilliant opportunity. It was a fantastic miss. But look at the power of Taylor there. Just smashing my defender into bits. Breaking into the box. But... Unfortunately, we do get a little bit on the ball, and for, for Taylor, it goes a little bit pear-shaped. But my God, he just smashed them 
battered my defender into submission. But we picked the ball up with Lansbury. Lansbury going with that shot. What a beautiful shot that was. And what an equally world-class save that was by the Ipswich Town goalkeeper. You'll see he just gets a hand to it at the last minute. It looks like it's going to bend away regardless. But he does get a hand to it. He didn't know it was going to go wide. I mean, that was just inspirational by Lansbury. And he's such an impact player during the games. And he's going to step up to take the corner. Swing it in towards that back post. We get a beautiful head up that goes completely wrong. We header it out of the edge of the box. But we pick it up with Abadoon. He squares it to Mackie. Mackie plays it back into Lansbury. Lansbury down that right-hand side. Pulls the cross back. And a beautiful header there by Gardner. And again, the Ipswich Town goalkeeper is absolutely equal to it with another world-class save. Absolutely brilliant. Being bombarded. I mean, that's great diving header by Gardner. Unfortunately, it wasn't the perfect height for a goalkeeper. Anything around their chest area and within their arm span is going to be an easy save. But what a flying header that was by Gardner. I would never have believed that he would be a diving header expert. We have another header. And again, what a fantastic save from the Ipswich Town goalkeeper. Again from Gardner. I do believe that the ball just went straight up and straight down like a yo-yo for the townkeeper. He had some sort of magical spell on that ball. But it was a great piece of pressure. And it was the only time we really looked to be trouble in Ipswich. Apart from that, Town dominated possession. They dominated the midfield battle. And that was something we We've got to learn to do is dominate, but a poor, poor defensive error by Ipswich allows Lansbury in, and I'll tell you what, when he gets a sniff, he scores. He is sensational. His work rates, his work ethic, his all-round game is absolutely fantastic. Probably my favourite player at this moment in time, just because of what he can do. His passing is brilliant. At times, he does go a bit ski with, but I would say nine times out of ten, he's on the ball. He is absolutely brilliant bang on and it just showed you know he's got strength he's got ability he's got vision he reads the game he took a chance that the town defender was going to make a cock up it came off and you don't you can't teach that to players you can't teach that that is just something that's inbred in them it's a natural ability that these players have and Lansbury has that ability as you can see Gardner was holding his ribs there took a bit of a severe knock um, in fact, he's probably got a little bit of bruising and he might be out for a game or two with that because uh, it's, it was quite a nasty little knock. I mean, he put himself on the line and done the business, but that's the way it goes in football. And again, look at Town. They're very sloppy at the back. Perhaps we can see why they are dropping down the table with their defending. It's really, really poor. Fantastic header. Lansbury goes for the, the spectacular over-the-head kick, but unfortunately he was just offside. It's a shame that the header actually didn't go in. I mean, it's a beautiful guided header. It's perfect height, perfect power. Just not good enough in the end, which is a real shame. But Town, in the last few minutes, absolutely upped the heat. Really did turn up the heat. Kept the ball really well. Made it really difficult for us to get the ball. But we did get the ball. We try and clear it. And again, we just give the ball away easily until Lansbury steps in. Picks the ball up. He goes to play a nice ball forward. And again, it was the tackle. He missed time to pass. But thankfully, that referee did blow that full-time whistle. Otherwise, we could have been looking at a 1-1 scoreline. We had to defend so resiliently in those last few moments of that game. It really was an intense game. Unfortunately, just not enough opportunities, which is a little bit frustrating. But we are sitting third in the league. And I'm really, really chuffed with the way the boys are doing at this moment in time. I used to dream about cars and things and things About being a star and things and things I thought that I would